well, the first thing I do is find out what the person personally is interested in. So coaching is like a mirror. And it's a mirror of that person's inner development. And so it's a system of asking questions. Uh, I almost consider it like a palette for the painter. If I'm going to paint a painting, I need a wide-ranging palette. And coaching is assisting a person, mirror-like, to notice where they're going, what their intention or vision is, what their purpose is in being curious about their next step on a journey they're taking. Usually it's a journey in some creative area, exploratory area. It's a leadership development area often. It's a courage area. How do I get my motivation to do something of importance? And with all of that, we open up our ability to ask the perfect question that takes them to their next step. Well, uh, we came out of an era, I'm a little older than many coaches, we came out of an era of uh, 100 years of psychotherapy. And so the focus was on how people were created by the past. It was almost like uh, when I was learning psychology, and I'm a psychologist, there was this idea out there that, you know, the identity is like a railroad and the train goes along the tracks and then it stays on those tracks for your lifetime. Now, with coaching, what we're doing is building the tracks. With coaching, we're creating the future, we're creating the quality of abilities that we want to have. And we're developing our skill and being really flexible. So there was a need to shift a lot of these inner metaphors about what it meant to be human and go into the self-discovery mode that has allowed us to create a science of developing futures. I think it's the public's awareness of the potential that we all have that's been the biggest obstacle for coaching. People have no idea of their capacity to use the mind and the brain. They have no idea of their inner genius and the fact that this is available all the time. Uh, now with the new brain research, it's very clear that it, even in six weeks with our brain's neuroplasticity, we can change very effectively who we are. We're not tied to what happened to us, or we're not tied to the education system we had. We can, in fact, grow and change at any age. The first competency is curiosity and real warm interest in your client. So the ability to drop all your aims for what you think that person should or must do. And just be very interested in how they're going to get their result. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a competency in listening with interest and appreciation. It's a competency in then uh, noticing how that person is beginning their own inner development and following and assisting them as they do that. Well, there's two areas. Mm -hmm. One is coaching leaders, and that means we're developing a whole group of leadership capacities. Uh, of course, there's motivation and courage, but there's also the skill sets of systemic thinking, the ability to assist others to get motivated, the ability to uh, really uh, understand the key aspects of producing a result in uh, perhaps an area of execution and that's timed and requires finesse. So coaching is great for all of those. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, there's the system itself. So we're coaching leaders, we're also coaching systems. And the systems uh, have a 
a phenomenal ability to, just like dominoes, develop uh, the uh, effective teams, effective, um, call them initiatives, effective best practices, mm -hmm. effective mission, vision, uh, and strategy itself, right? Well, more than that, what the company is becoming right. as we use system coaching. And so coaching managers, we use it, we just don't go in and start coaching managers. We're actually working with that company's development, its initiatives, its long-term uh, unfolding, mm -hmm. and it works phenomenally. Great. Uh, I've been working with about uh, 10 uh, Fortune 1000 companies in the last era, mm -hmm. and in the last few years, three big ones. And to watch those companies develop through coaching mm -hmm. uh, would rattle the stars if, if, if people understood how quickly and powerfully a corporation can change. Well, the biggest area is implementation and execution. Okay. Because in fact, often, even though people all agree on a result and a time frame, uh, what happens is far from what they originally plan. Things fall apart, there's different things, and it's nobody's fault, quote unquote. But in fact, uh, people have not been thinking like leaders at every level of the company. So we're assisting people to become leaders in their realm. As they work, they are taking responsibility for the whole system. And that shifts everything. The development of coaching is kind of like uh, new fields opening up at the very same time. So there's the inner heart of coaching, mm -hmm. how it works. Mm -hmm. And then there's the uh, discoveries of how to implement coaching in medicine, how to implement coaching in education, how to implement coaching in engineering, how to implement coaching in uh, large system shifts, political coaching, family coaching. There's a, a whole compendium of major areas where coaching is now maturing. Well, we're not only working with training coaches and, of course, doing coaching inside of companies. So our coaches uh, work with their uh, teams of, of, and projects inside companies mm -hmm. and produce results as well as uh, the trainings that we produce. Uh, so a lot of our, our work is corporate, team coaching, uh, working with managers, working with leaders, working with sales coaching, working with... Um, uh, negotiations coaching, which is a big one, an amazing area, working uh, with productivity mm -hmm. and so on. These are all areas uh, where we've designed programs, assist leaders and so on. Um, through the years, uh, and uh, I don't know if this is uh, relevant, our focus is developing more and more towards system change. So this is where coaching is going rapidly. Uh, we're in 45 countries, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of countries, and there's about six coming aboard. There's a lot going on where every area of the world, uh, there's a kind of a silent revolution going on. And uh, the world is full of all sorts of political changes, and the attention is totally on them. But inside the corporations, Coaching is growing, 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 growing. Inside the cultures, coaching is growing. And so there's this silent revolution where people are beginning to learn how to think much more powerfully, much more courageously, and much more truthfully for themselves. Well, right now, of course, online coaching is just spreading. So Ericsson International has an online academy. We're using the inverted classroom, all sorts of effective techniques for adult education, 
to assist uh, a really powerful coaching experience, even though people are sitting in their home in a classroom that's across the globe. This works, uh, and people, of course, do the same thing in organizations. They may be in all different offices down the hall taking the same program. So we see many more online courses, and we're using technologies to support that. People meet uh, in their online practice. They meet, uh, they watch videos together. They see, they use what we call the hub of experience, the mm -hmm. uh, already organized um, uh, coach training, and they can access any of it. Yeah. Now, this is true for all the different areas of coaching as well. So people get together in a collegial way. Uh, it doesn't matter where they're located, and the online classroom supports them. Well, every single session is different. And the coaches, uh, for example, I'm just working with trainers today. Uh, these coaches are learning continuously ways to work across culturally with different kinds of mindsets, with different kinds of, uh, if you want to call it, uh, strategies for thinking. Uh, I can only see it becoming more flexible and uh, more engaging for people. Well, again, Erickson is involved in assisting this. We're the, one of the biggest challenges for coaches is they tend to work alone. Okay. And so uh, what we're doing is we're assisting them. We've got a, a huge program called the World Game. Erickson World Game conferences are happening in 15 countries in 2015. And they're big conferences. Um, we've just done two of 250 people. So coaches get together. They're learning new skill sets. They're working in teams and discovering how to create little mastery groups, uh, groups of uh, partners that work with some kind of contributory legacy, where they're contributing to their culture in some way. And these aren't small. Some of them are very big. Uh, we're actually assisting some major communities ecologically, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, education, mm -hmm. educational coaches. It's kind of exciting. And this dr draws the coaches together, allows them to experience their own, if you want to call it, yeah. empowered community self. Yeah. And uh, uh, we uh, see their development continue. Okay, well, that's interesting. It's not a matter of tips. Okay. It's a matter of what's your next step. So if uh, everyone knows the journey that they're on, including all the coaches we work with. Where are you strong? Where are you weak? What can you strengthen? Mm -hmm. What's your next step? And generally, the area we are getting stronger with is handling old fears, what we call gremlins. Mm -hmm. Um, the ancient ones are fear of dreaming, fear of failure, fear of upsetting people, fear of conflict. Mm -hmm. Coaches have been included in um, all the ways in which those old gremlin systems have settled into the lives of people. And so as coaches, we're uh, learning how to step beyond our history as well. And this is where getting together with other people, working with mastery groups, working with vision, yep. assists a lot.